All right. So um, once again, welcome everybody to the trading training. And thank you for coming uh, today. And I am sure that you guys will uh, learn from a lot, uh, a lot from today's training because uh, we will also be uh, teaching you. Um, I will be teaching you how to use the crypto box exchange hand in hand together with Alexis's um, trading trains as well. So first, we are going to have Alexis with her uh, financial literacy training. So um, Alexis, our communications director, uh, you can take the stage anytime. Hi, can I be seen and heard clearly? Yes, loud and clear. Perfect. Okay, good. Morning, I assume everyone, but just in case, afternoon and morning for those of you. Um, so without further ado, let us just jump right in. Um, but before that, we would just like to reiterate that um, this is a reteaching of the modules from the very start for those who are new and for those who probably just want to go through it again, because as we said, we've condensed the, these to be able to be um, learned in three sessions, okay? So I do see some uh, familiar names and some new names first. So for those of you who are already coming back, this is just to remind you that um, this might be something that you've already learned, okay? All right, let me... May I request to be made co-host so I may share my screen, please? All right, your co-host now. Okay. I uh, know I have, um, uh, there's another, there's two Alexis's here. Oh, all right, all right, hold on. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Here you go. I hope you can see my screen. So for um, so for today's module, uh, module number one, we're going to be going through three topics, and that'll be first will be foundational trading principles. Second will be an introduction to basic indicators. And the third topic will be technical analysis, specifically support and resistance lines. All right, so at the end of the module for today, what you can expect is to be familiar with the foundational trading principles and familiar too with the basic indicators, familiar as in you understand what is going on, what is used for what, but it's up to you how you use it, because as we say here, um, trading is not 100% a science. Okay, and last but not least, we will start one of the technical analysis, which is specifically support and resistance line. So at, hopefully at the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to identify support and resistance lines on the charts on your own, okay? So to start, um, yes, happy to see you too, Joshua, the story. All right, um, so to start, let us um, first understand the concept that we experience dimensional loss when we try to approach the market because dimensional loss happens when you try to analyze a complex entity through the dimensional lens of the price chart, right? So the financial market, it is complex and it is multi-dimensional, but our only way to perceive it is through the bi-dimensional price chart with your y-axis and x-axis showing price over time, price changing over time. So in between these two is where the dimensional loss occurs, all right? And it's very important to know this because um, there's a thing called Bonini's paradox and Bonini's paradox states that every attempt to understand a complex thing by simplifying it makes it make a lot less sense, all right? So basically if you try to simplify, um, assume 
that a complex entity is simple and your approach to it is simple, it will make less sense. Which is why um, here we are trying to learn about trading from the ground up. We start from the foundationals and then we move on up and we don't jump right into technical analysis so that you personally will understand what is going on and why it's going on. Okay, so it will get complicated at first and then simple, respecting Bonin's paradox. All right, so this is a very good um, like image representation of what I just mentioned about dimensional loss. So you see this cylinder in the middle, right? It's a three-dimensional cylinder. It's got a length, it's got a width, and it's got a um, height. So that is truth. But if you're only able to perceive it through its two-dimensional shadows, right? You'll either see it as a circle or a square. The thing is, both people who claim that it's either a circle or a square, none of them are wrong. And at the same time, both of them are also right. Such is the case with the market too, and such is the case with trading. So let us look at an example, right? You've got a major upward flow. So you can have a trader who will place along from the um, earlier position to the left over here and uh, open the trade and close it on top of here and make some profit. But you could also have another trader, despite it being a major upward flow, opening short position, opening sell positions, and also making profits like this. So it is very similar to what we said, uh, what we just saw in the image over there with the cylinder. Both of them are right and none of them are wrong, but it's only if they um, even um, have the awareness that it is not limited to what it is based on the two-dimensional shadows. So they will only get a sense that it is neither just a circle or a square if they broaden their perspectives and open up to the possibility that it could be something else. Okay. Okay, so. So the example I showed earlier, this example about the two traders opening opposing trades, but both still being able to make money, leads me to the um, next principle in which states that subjectivity is necessary in trading, right? So example, you've got the subjective interpretation of the market. There's your price and action interpretation, your risk interpretation, People have the same cognitive biases and we will dive in into cognitive biases another time, but people have the same cognitive biases, but they may have different personalities. And that is very clearly shown in the two traders that we just talked about, spoke about earlier, right? So they have their own price action interpretation and their own risk management. They've got the same cognitive biases, but they have different personalities. One of them might be a trader that likes to leave their trade open and exposed to the market for a longer period of time for a few days. And the other might be more comfortable um, closing it in a few hours or as long as it's making profit. And that's why subjectivity is necessary, right? Another reason why subjectivity is necessary is because a great deal of how the market looks in the chart is due to the subjective interpretation of millions of traders around the world. So what do I mean by that? Oh, sorry. So what goes on is that there is a nominal price and the nominal price is the current price of a certain asset. And then you got your perceived value. So let's say example, simplifying gold, right? Someone thinks that um, gold is worth than, a lot more than $5, but its nominal price is currently $5. So then the trader that perceives that gold is worth more than $5 will come to the conclusion that it is being um, undervalued, right? So if they come to the conclusion that it's undervalued, 
they will um, foresee that price of gold will go up because they think that it's worth more, their perceived value of it is more. So what will they do? They will open buy positions, right? If they think price is more than its value, they'll come to the conclusion that it's overpriced, they will open sell positions and causes the market to fall. And this is what we said earlier, if a certain trader um, sees that price is uh, the per it, their perceived value of uh, that the assets nominal current price is lesser than it's than the traders perceived value of the asset, they will come to the conclusion that it is underpriced, and then they will buy buy open buy positions, which will cause the market to rise, and that's why you've got your um, market that goes up and down rather chaotically. All right, so the point of this is that subjectivity is necessary. And also that the trader is a unique part of the trade plan. And this is very important because as we've said, as we've gone through with two examples, we can only give you the ingredients in which it is you who chooses what you mix with what and what works for you. All right, we've got different schedules, we've got different um, fears, levels of fear. And we've got, um, some of us might be more conservative than others and some of us might want to take more risk, right? So you as a trader is a unique part of the trade plan. So in coming up with your trading strategy, you have to factor yourself in it. All right, so another very important trading, foundational trading principle is contextual trading. And as our CEO Jonas has introduced, this trading is um, tra every story in a trade, a trade, every story in a trade, something along those lines, right? So what do I mean by contextual trading? It is when two or more techniques or signals converge to the same point in price. So you've got your technique one, it overlaps with technique two and they both agree with each other, all right? And that space where they intersect, right? That is your story. That is your logical reasons. That is your, um, yeah, your logical consistent reasons for opening the trade. Right? Even if you do not have to answer to anyone why you opened a trade, you should at the very least be able to answer it to yourself. Right? And it's very important to not just rely on one technique because as we said, the market is a multi-dimensional um, complex entity. Right? So example, the, the photograph that we looked at earlier with, this, with the cylinder in the middle, only using one technique is equivalent to just seeing one side of the shadow. Do you understand? So then if you converge two techniques, you have your trading context, you've got your story, right? Then it's only then that you'll be able to even perceive the market as more than what you think it is. All right, so you do not do not just base your um, the reasons for opening your trade based on one thing. Let's say just based on this, the look of a candlestick or just based on your support resistance line or just based on your momentum. So you should be able to um, look at maybe at least two of them and see if they agree with each other and may they when they don't agree with each other, that is when it gets interesting, all right? So trading has a mixture of things. A lot of people on the get-go might just assume that it's all about technical analysis, knowing how to um, analyze the market, forecasting where it's going to go, but then a lot, what a lot of people won't tell you is 
the deep trading psychology part, your, the psychological effects it has on you and the how much your um, psyche affects your trading too. And risk management. So keep in mind that all these foundational trading principles are all interrelated to each other. So imagine them as um, pillars, right? Strong pillars. Each pillar has to be strong, but then to hold up um, an infrastructure, all the pillars have to be present, okay? It doesn't matter if one of them are strong or one of them are weak, all of them have to be present. So your contextual, uh, your foundational trading principles are like that. Okay, so let's jump right in to basic indicators. All right, and we'll, I'll explain why later, that why we're only going through the basic indicators. Okay, so right off the bat, this is your price chart. This is not necessarily an indicator, but um, I just put it under this topic. So which see these candlesticks, the green and red candlesticks, right? This is called your price action. That is the action of your price. You can see how price changes over time. This down here is your volume, all right? I mean, I don't have to explain why your price action is important because without your price action, you wouldn't know what the current price of an asset is. So down here, represented by these bars, these uh, vertical bars are is your volume. So why is volume important? Because as margin traders, right, you make profit through the difference in price, regardless whether price goes up or price goes down. So the volume is how you know if people are interested in this asset and are trading in this asset. Because if people aren't interested or trading this asset, then there won't be a rise or a fall for you to try to make profit out of. Make sense? Okay, so check your volume, make sure it's got, it doesn't have to have extremely high volumes all the time because the market comes in waves. So as long as there's interest in the asset, that is what you want to trade, okay? This one right here is your relative strength index or the RSI. Think of it like um, the energy. So if you look at the, the price action, it looks like there's an energy behind it causing it to go up and go down, right? Mm -hmm. So that is your RSI. And if you try to research for yourself how they calculate RSI, um, it is a lot similar to force right? Force equals mass times acceleration. So we won't get into the details of how they compute RSI, but think of it like that. So your price action is your moving price. The RSI is the force behind it. Okay, and that's important because sometimes price goes up, but then RSI indicates that the force is getting weak, and then you'll see for yourself that price actually drops in the near future. And that's why it's important. Okay, so most people, most people use RSI um, as an indicator to check whether an asset is being overbought and oversold. But I'd just like to stress that that is not what we use it for. And the reason why is because on trending days, when the market is obviously going up, right? the RSI can go into the overbought zone several times. So then if you're using the RSI as an indicator to know whether an asset is being overbought and oversold and you think it's overbought, so then now people are going to sell because it's overbought, keep this in mind, right? Notice how many times price goes into the overbought zone and is still still keeps going up. Imagine how many times, how much money you would have lost if you say placed a short over here, overbought zone, and then it still kept going up. Okay, so on trending days, remember price, um, the RSI can uh, show price going into the overbought or oversold zone a lot of times. Okay, and why is that? We'll get in 
to it deeper next time, but um, I'll try to simplify it. Why? It's because your RSI, look here, your RSI has a measurement between zero to a hundred, right? But then your, so that is a fixed scale, but then your price comes in an unfixed scale, right? Your price can go up very high, it can go very low down to zero. And that is why um, there's a discrepancy in that sense, okay? All right, so why we only went through the basic indicators because all your other indicators are derived from these, actually are derived from price action and from volume. Right? Maybe you have some more complex indicators and um, this is why I said, uh, treat it like your key ingredients. If you're a chef, it would be equivalent to maybe your onions, your garlic, the, regardless of what kind of dish you're making. I'm guessing, I'm not a cook, but I'm guessing that those ingredients are always present. So, all right, and the reason why we stray away from having too many indicators is first of all, right off the bat, analysis paralysis. If you have too much information, there's too much noise, right? You won't be able to make a trade because if you've got a lot of indicators telling you different things, then what are you gonna do? All right, another thing is that smoothing algorithms. So there's such a thing called a moving average and there's, they're usually represented by um, wavy lines over here in the middle. So there are many, many kinds of um, smoothing algorithms, but we try to stay away from that because smoothing algorithms are averaged from your um, price and your volume, as we said. And when they calculate that, there's going to be a lag trade-off. And when there's a lag trade-off that will put us behind the market rather than in front of it, all right? We want to be in front of the market at all times. Okay, so moving on. Like we said, all you need is just the basic ones because at the end of the day, it is just um, a matter of buying or selling, right? Okay, so moving. All right, so another, let me just check my slides. Okay, another, again, I, I wouldn't consider this an indicator, but um, it's just, a, it's just a matter of the terms which I don't think is important. So, right. Another thing that you'll see on your price chart, when you open your charts, is you've you have access to several time frames. Right. So you've got your one minute, three minutes, five minutes, one hour, 15 minutes, one day, one week. Right? You you can have access to um, viewing the chart in the different days. So let me just show you where that is. Highlighted in the yellow box over here at the top left-hand corner. It may vary depending on what website you use to view your charts, but it's usually very easily accessible and seen. Okay, so what is the difference between these um, time charts? So example over here, this is a 15 minute time chart. And you can see there's a little timer here right under the price. So if you're in the 15 minute time chart, a new candlestick appears every 15 minutes, All right? So here, this timer down here just tells us that there's seven minutes and 36 seconds more to go until the candlestick completely closes. All right, so same goes with the other time frames. And this is important to know because we do not analyze a candlestick that has not yet been closed. Because a candlestick can, if you're in the 15 minute time chart and the candlestick is not closed yet, and it's showing as a red candlestick a few minutes later, that has all the, depending on how chaotic the market is, 
depending on the situation too, that red candlestick can turn into a green one. All right, and your analysis will be totally different from that. So we do not, we do not analyze candlesticks that have not yet closed. Okay. All right. So example, another um, useful thing about your multi-time frame analysis is, let's say, what looks like a straight vector on a four hour chart in the one hour chart has smaller vectors within it, all right? And this is important because again, you as a trader are a unique part of the trading strategy, all right? And if you are the kind, um, so the difference in the time frames in trading is just how long it takes for a trade to play out, okay? So if you do your analysis using the four, four hour time chart, do expect that whatever you forecasted or whatever you, wherever you think it's going to go, it's going to take several days because it takes, it's gonna take four hours for each candlestick to appear, right? So then this is important because for those of you who would like to expose your um, trade open in the market for a long period of time, longer period of time for days maybe, you want to swing trade, then go ahead, four hour time chart, one hour time chart is for you. All right. And it's important to know that there are vectors within these larger vectors. And why is this important? Because these aren't just vectors. Each vector is a trading opportunity. All right. Each movement is a trading opportunity to make some profit. So another thing to note is that there is a hierarchy of signals between time frames. So regardless of what your signals are, example, support and resistance lines, there is a hierarchy. Then you can use this as a guide, a useful guide. So the lower you go in the time frame, the more detail you get. And the higher you go in the time frame, the stronger your signal power. So let's say you have a support and resistance lines based on your one hour chart that will have more signal power than support and resistance line that you drew in your 30 seconds chart, for sure, all right? So that's the importance of signal power and the importance of detail is that if you're looking at the market from a, sorry, just let me have some water. So if you're looking at the market from a bigger time frame, because you're only remembering that the higher the time frame, the stronger the stronger the signal power, right? Price flows, price shifts. That's the most important and the most vital part about knowing the market is that it shifts. It's like a flowing river. You know, you never step into the same river twice. Okay, it's always flowing. And if you're looking at it from afar, you might not be able to see when it shifts, when the flow shifts from going down to going up. And that is a very dangerous place to get trapped in. So if you're looking at your chart from a higher perspective for our chart, and you'll say, oh, very clearly it's going down, right? So you'll open a short, but then if you were to look at the 15 minute chart, you can see that it's actually slowly staircasing up and the shift, there has, the shift of flow has started and you missed it because you did not look at the lower time frames because you did not try to see the detail. So then imagine if you placed a short right at the very point of a reversal, how much you would have potentially lost, okay? All right, oh, we're making good time. So 20 more minutes to cover. Um, first thing about technical analysis that we're gonna learn, support and resistance lines. So support and resistance lines are basically like barriers that price tends to respect based on the idea of market memory. You've got two kinds of support and resistance lines. You've got horizontal and you've got your slope. So first let's go through the horizontal. 
example, this is your price action, right? And notice, so how you can identify your support and res resistance lines is a point in price that price always visits. So right off the bat over here, I can tell there is a resistance over here, right? Notice how price goes up, tests, touches that area, goes back down, and then visits that area again. So it's sort of like a barrier that price tests. So what I'll do, I'll draw a horizontal line and that will become my resistance line. But an important thing to note about support and resistance lines is they've got a, um, they can shift between the two. So a support line is not only a support line and a resistance line is not just a resistance line. What was once a support line can become a resistance line and vice versa. Okay, so example over here, right? Um, so this, at the beginning part of this price action, price visits that point and price tests it, does not break it yet. So that is a resistance line. However, once price breaks the resistance line, and this usually happens in a burst of volatility. So it usually shoots up and like breaks the barrier like that. So when that happens, right? your resistance line can become a support line that price will now bounce off of. Okay, so that is very important to note, which is why I have a, a habit of calling these lines support resistance lines rather than support line and resistance lines, okay? All right, see, notice how price visited this area in price four times. And then it bounced off of it after as a support line. Okay, I hope so far, if everyone's following me. Okay, so this is what it looks like on an actual price chart because this is just a price action that I doodled. So this is an actual price chart, all right? Right off the bat, I can see this is an area in price that price visits, bounce off, bounces off of, and then acts as a resistance later on. So I will put a line over there, right? That helps you as a guide. So example, if price started going up over here, well, it'll be ideal if you opened a buy position over here, but we're, we're trying to be realistic, right? So maybe you'll open it a few candlesticks after, but then you have to know at which point it's going to stop because if you keep your trade open, it's making money. And if you leave it open for way too long, you'll watch it lose money too. So by just by this information over here, you drew that line, you would know to, to set a take profit over there. You wouldn't be 100% sure whether price will break it, but then regardless of whether um, price breaks it or not, you would have already gotten this much profit. Right, that is a change in price from about 1630 to 1658, and that is a lot of pips. Okay, so another, right, I can see over here, this um, is a support line. Okay, so how do you know when a support line or a resistance line is strong? Um, it's first following the hierarchy of signals between the time frames. And another thing is that how many times price has visited it, okay? So imagine if I drew a support line here and price only visited it once. I can't really vouch for the integrity of that support and resistance line. Okay, so again, you've got two types of support resistance lines, horizontal and sloped, and it's got a switching dynamic. Right, what once was a support line can become a resistance line and vice versa. And it not only acts as a barrier, but also as a catapult for price to bounce off of. And it follows, it respects the hierarchy of signals. So again, a support and resistance line that you drew in the 15 minute chart will definitely be stronger than a support resistance line that you drew based on the 30 second chart, okay? Again, the lower the 
the more deep you get, the higher the time frame, the more signal power you get. So now let's jump into the slope support resistance line. So this is interesting because as you know, the market price action comes in vectors like this. Your slope support and resistance line allows you to see, um, gives you new angles and new perspectives in which might not have been obvious before if you didn't use your support resistance, your slope support resistance line. So example, right? Your price action is like this. And you can see that price actually bounces within that um, area of the slope support resistance line. So in a lot of ways, it every principle that applies to your horizontal support resistance lines also applies to your slope support and resistance lines. Yeah? Okay. And example over here, right? You can see that it was a resistance here. Again, it has, acts as a resistance. So if you were just basing off of your um, horizontal support resistance line, you wouldn't have been able to see this downward angle that price actually um, bounces off of, or let's say it has a resistance, right? It's not always that price will bounce off of it horizontally like this. More often than not, it will bounce off of it in a certain angle. So your slope support resistance lines gives you access to the market in new angles that aren't obvious in the first place. Okay, so again, it works under the exact same principles as the horizontal type. It is drawn in a certain angle. And you can find many different market angles that would usually pass unnoticed. And that is very important because a lot of the common thinking apparently is that if you follow what everyone else is trading, if you follow their positions, then because the market is from the second order of chaos, um, your forecast of the market, people's forecast of the market affects the market as compared to things that belong in the first order of chaos, like weather forecasting, right? Regardless of what the weatherman says, if, it, he, if he says it's gonna rain and it doesn't end up raining, right? What a, the weatherman's forecast does not affect the actual weather, but it's different with the financial market. If people say that price is going to go up, it's going to affect the market, all right? So, if you believe following the herd is the way to go, then that's you. But then actually your edge should be act, having access to the market that others do not, right? Seeing things that people do not. And then you just might catch the reversals before it actually happens. And that'll be great for you. All right, so to wrap today's um, module up, I hope um, it's, I feel like this quote really um, explains the whole point of this first module is that when the root is deep, there's no reason to fear the wind. And why I put this quote here is because we are learning um, from the basic understanding of trading first, before we jump into technical analysis. So you'll know exactly what is going on from the foundations itself. Uh, Nana, y'all raised, their hand. Do you have a question? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask me a question if you like. Hi, thank you. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Please, uh, you 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 were like a uh, higher time frames, very strong, strong. But example, you use thirty minutes for support and resistance. Yeah. Please do you, do you get my question? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I. I just was at the end of your question. Or uh, what? Okay. You. You. You used a lower time frame in drawing the support and resistance, but you just mentioned it's a uh, stronger to use a higher time frame. 
Yeah, so it's it's relative, you see. So your 15 minute chart is a higher time frame as compared to your one minute chart, right? So as we said, it depends on your personality as a trader, um, depending on how long you want to leave your trade open for, all right? So the reason why I use 15 minutes personally for me, I've tested it out before. I've tested out um, basing my analysis on one hour time frames, and it takes a few days for the trade to actually play out. Like I can forecast where price will drop, but it will take four days for it to happen. And I wanna be able to make profit before the day ends. So what I did is I experimented with other time frames, and I found that for me, that matches my personality is the 15 minute chart, and which is why I draw my support resistance lines there. All right. And um, so the best way for you to understand this, because I can answer your question, but that will not help until you try it yourself. So then um, I'll say higher time frames would be minutes onwards. Anything lower than that, I would consider it as a lower time frame and not as strong of a signal power. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I think it's fine. It's very um, important to find the balance because I stick with 15 minutes because it's it might not give me a stronger signal power, right? Because I don't want to lose the detail either. So I wanna get a good balance of both detail and both signal power. And for me, um, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, I feel like that's where it's at. Because with your one hour time frame. Um, you might experience a lack of a detail and you might not catch if price shifts into a different direction. And that's very dangerous. So that is why I keep it at 30 minutes, 15 minutes. I draw my analysis there. I hope I answered your question, Nana. Is that all right? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for asking. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, because if there is none so far, we are going to move on to Christiania. Um, I'll pass you back to her. And uh, she is going to go a, through a walkthrough on how to use the exchange. All right, so I hope today's um, first module was understandable enough. And I hope you do see the importance of understanding it from the root. Okay, because I've tried before jumping right in, just technical analysis, right? I follow those trading um, tips and strategies without even understanding what's going on. And it's very different if you understand what's actually going on from the root. All right, so um, may I invite Christiania back onto the spotlight, please? Thank you all again. Okay, so um, so that was uh, it for Alexis' uh, uh, trading trainings. I hope you guys were able to take some notes on that. And uh, for me, I will be going through actually how to use the CryptoBox Exchange. So it's more of like a walkthrough, like what I usually do in uh, during the um, the introductory calls and the Zoom meeting, but uh, I'm just going to break it down to different modules. All right, so uh, this is going to be really quick, about um, 15 minutes only. So uh, first, uh, hold on, let me just time myself so that I don't take too much time. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, 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 yeah, no, actually, correct, no, no, okay, so. Hello? Uh, okay, so I think that might have been a mistake. So I'm just gonna move on. Okay, so uh, let me just um, share my screen. Okay, so first and foremost, um, hold on, I do not have the right screen on. OK, 
Okay, yes. So uh, I'm just going to break it down into a module. So I'm just going to try to put this in presentation mode. Okay, I hope everyone can see the screen. I think I'm sharing it right now. Alexis, uh, can my screen be seen? Yes, we can see it. All right, all right, thank you. Yes, thank you for the response. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna go through really quickly the CryptoBox Exchange Box through, okay? So of course, the first thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to log, log into the website, which is CryptoBox.exchange. And uh, I know you will be greeted with this. Um, this is actually just uh, the landing page. So a welcome page onto uh, whatever CryptoBox Exchange is about and um, everything about what uh, CryptoBox Exchange is and what it can do for you. So basically you buy assets, trade, learn to trade, get trading signals and connect with like-minded people all on this platform, okay? And then um, to actually start trading, so this is just a landing page, all right? So to actually start trading and to sign up, you just click on the sign up button right here, okay? So yes, yeah, that is uh, sign up. So you're going to sign up first. Um, if you do not have an account, just click on the button right here. Uh, it's really quick, it's really simple. I think you just, they just require an email and a password. Let's just click on that to see, and a mobile phone number, and then you will click submit, all right? So that uh, really simple, um, I don't think you're gonna get lost in that, but if you do have problems with registering, or maybe you've already registered, or uh, if you, yes, if you do have any problems, you can just reach out to us and we will try to fix it for you. Okay, so once you've already had your um, account, uh, you can just log in. So this is the um, account that I'll be using. Okay, so we're done with topic one, which is the sign up and the login, really simple. Topic two is the dashboard, okay? So once you've logged in, actually, this is how your dashboard will look like. It should state your name here. Uh, your current login at, your last three visits. I think these are just for security purposes, just to make sure that you are the one um, logging into your own account because uh, of course your accounts are gonna be holding your money. So you, we have to make sure that it's safe and you as well have to make sure that you're the only one actually having access to your account. Okay, so this is how your dashboard looks like, okay? And then uh, I just want to go through really quickly what is on your dashboard. There is not much here, actually, it's not very complicated. So on your left-hand side, you have your e-wallet and your margin account and your exchange account. So for this profile, um, it has zero dollars in the wallet. It has one, two, three, four, five, um, five margin accounts. But uh, out of these five margin accounts, I'm only able to trade actually one, two, three, four, because these are the only funded accounts, okay? And then uh, there are no exchange accounts in this uh, profile. So uh, what exchange accounts are for usually is if um, you want to do spot trades. So that's when you create an exchange account, but uh, I have not made one because I don't really do spot trading. So I did not create one. And then uh, you see these tabs right here. I'm just gonna go through really quickly what is under these tabs. All right, so the first tab, you have the add account. And uh, this is where you're going to add your exchange and margin account, which are the accounts that I mentioned earlier and will appear right here on the left-hand side. Okay, so your exchange and margin account. Your add no, fund, is, sorry. Hello. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So under your add funds tab, you have your. Um, this is where you're gonna go to add your funds. Okay. So I just want, um, especially for those people who don't uh, really know uh, what goes on uh, when it comes to adding funds and stuff. Once you click add funds, actually, it will go straight into your e wallet. 
So just because you have money in your e-wallet, you actually, you can't do any trading yet unless you transfer those funds from your e-wallet to your margin or exchange account. So that is actually what has happened here. So that's why there's no money in the e-wallet as they all have been transferred into uh, these accounts respectively. Okay, so that is uh, where, uh, when, uh, where you're gonna go to add your funds into your e-wallet. And to actually transfer those funds from your e-wallet to the margin account to be able to trade, you're going to click on transfer here. Okay, so first you add, a, you add funds to your e-wallet and then you transfer them through internal transfer into your margin or your exchange account. So in your internal transfer, actually, you can um, transfer your funds across your uh, different accounts or back into your e-wallet. So um, basically you can move your money anywhere internally using this feature here. Okay, so uh, for CryptoBox Exchange, you're also allowed to actually transfer your funds to another account. Uh, you're just gonna click on transfer and external transfer. And uh, this is where you actually just have to type in the CryptoBox account. So yes, you're only allowed to do external transfers to other CryptoBox accounts. Okay, and then the last tab is, uh, sorry, this, the last tab uh, that's on this row is the settings tab. So um, I'm pretty sure uh, you all know what happens in the settings tab, your profile, your KYC verification, password, recovery password, account security, user activity, Okay, and the last tab here is the withdraw fund. So um, self-explanatory as well. Uh, if you want to take your money out of your, sorry, your crypto box exchange profile, this is where you're going to go. Okay, so uh, that is actually it for module one uh, for the crypto box exchange walkthrough. We've gone through sign up, login, and dashboard. Hold on, everybody, give me a moment. Okay, so that's it for module one. Really simple sign up, login, and dashboard. The second module, okay, uh, I think I still have time. We can go through at least a uh, topic, module two, topic one, actually. Introduction to the CryptoBox Exchange Interface. Okay, so, um, all right, so, uh, okay, so now that you're already in your account, hold on, let me just go back to the um, welcome page. All right, so um, now let's say you're already done with transferring your funds into your e wallet and you've transferred them to all your different accounts. So uh, as I've mentioned, you're only, uh, you can only start trading once you've already funded your account. Okay, so I can actually pick on either one of these accounts, but I'm going to use this one, uh, 8000053. And you see these red buttons right here. If you click on any of these red buttons, actually, it will lead you straight to the trade, to the CryptoBox Exchange trading platform. Okay, so uh, even if you click on, uh, if I click on this, this will open up, um, it should open up automatically into this 5.3 account. However, sometimes there are glitches, so it might open another account as, uh, however, you can uh, change that in the platform uh, by itself. So I just click on that. Okay, so this right here is the CryptoBox Exchange trading platform where all of the action and the trading and the money making happens. Okay, so um, I just want to uh, do a little introduction and go through what is on the interface, uh, especially for those who are new to, new to this interface. I know it might look uh, intimidating, but uh, if I, once I go through this, it's actually really simple. Okay, so this is your interface right here. Your upper tabs right here is the exchange and margin trading accounts, the accounts that I mentioned earlier. Hold on, give me a second. Uh, 
Okay, all right. Um, so uh, instead of the 53 account, I'll be opening the 54 account. So uh, as you can see, uh, it has already, um, this, this is actually sort of a glitch that happened. Uh, once again, I do want you to make sure that um, you are trading in the right account. So this is where you're going to actually look at. All right, this, um, this icon with the two people in it. Okay, so you just want to double check once again that you're trading in the account that you actually want to be trading in. So this is the one. And then uh, I just want to go through really quickly. Here are the tabs at the top. It says exchange. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I made a mistake. I'm supposed to be in the 53 account. All right, so let's just go back to the 53. Okay, so now I'm in the 53 account that I was supposed to be in in the first place. So once again, double check that you're in the account that you want to trade in. So this is the one right here. And uh, I just want to go through really quickly what is on this interface, right? So you see there are two tabs right here at the top that says exchange and margin trading. Remember the accounts that I mentioned, the margin account and the exchange account. So that is where it actually splits here as well. So the exchange accounts, you will be trading under the exchange tab. Okay, so since I do not have an exchange account, as you can see, um, it is it will ask me to register uh, some cash into the change into the exchange account. But uh, once you open the exchange account, actually it looks similar to the margin trading. So since I only have margin accounts, I will be under the margin trading tab. Okay, and then here is your uh, market watch. So um, this is the list of uh, markets that uh, you can look for if you want to view them. And uh, if there is like a market here that is not available in this list, you can just click on this button right here, add symbol. Okay, so this is basically um, uh, where you're gonna go to look for um, like your mark, your chart basically. Okay, so in here is uh, the list of assets that you want to trade, uh, that you want to trade in, okay? So uh, for this profile actually under the margin, account uh, we do not have any cryptocurrencies here there are missing assets in here if there is an asset that you want to trade in the margin uh, you do let us know if it's not in the list and we will add them in for you so i think these are the popular ones that people have been trading in so uh and for us we trade a lot in gold so that's why we have it as default so we're just going to leave it as that and then here at the top, you can see the details of your um, your uh, account and how much how much your account can actually hold in terms of trading. All right, so the balance this account has one thousand one hundred eighty two dollars. Equity margin, free margin, margin level, and um, this actually changes. The free margin changes once you have an open trade. Uh, you will be able you will be able to actually see it later. Okay, so uh, right under that we have the trade panel. And first button is the trade panel mode. You have the trade panel settings and a uh, hide trade panel, okay? So you can actually drag this around wherever you want this to be. So um, for today's walkthrough, actually for all of the walkthroughs, I will only be doing the simple trade panel mode because um, I think we might have a lot of um, new um, people who aren't really familiar in trading. So we, I want to prioritize those people. So we're just going to uh, keep in the tra uh, simple trade panel mode. There is also an advanced trade panel mode, but I think for those who are already advanced in trading, I'm pretty sure you will know how to get around using this. The terms are really um, put really simple already for you. Okay, so let's just go back to the simple panel mode. Okay, so under, under the trade panel, we have the market tab and the limit tab, okay? So um, in the market tab, this is where you will go if you want to buy or sell in the, um, uh, in let's say for example, gold, in gold's current price, uh, in its current moving price is what I mean. Okay. So all you have to do, of course, is just input your volume lot size. You can actually change, uh, if you, uh, you can have it as, see, I think, um, a uh, gold coin that we use. Uh, you can just
Hello, test, test. Hello, um, wait for a while. I think Christiania was uh, disconnected. Um, we we proceed uh, uh, for the time being, if um, she won't be around in 30 seconds time. While waiting for, for uh, Krishanya to be back, uh, let me just give you an announcement. To those uh, who is registering, to the to those who are actually applying for the uh, CryptoBox uh, debit visa card, please do register your account in CryptoBox exchange. And once you start funding it, please take a screenshot and the account number and then you send it to our email address, which we will uh, type in here in the chat box. Okay, uh, the announcement is like this. Number one, if you want to apply for your CryptoBox uh, debit visa card, first thing is to actually go to your CryptoBox uh, fund management dashboard. And there, there is a, there's a POS um, selection and you submit for that uh, application in the CryptoBox fund management dashboard. After that, the next one is actually you have to activate your CryptoBox exchange account and comply to the KYC requirement. And number three, once you want to start funding your, your uh, debit visa card, you have to send the fund to your CryptoBox exchange account and you will have to take a screenshot of the, the funding receipt and you send it to the email address, which we will give you together with your CryptoBox Exchange account number. Hello? Okay, you're back, Chandler. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I was gone. I think I've been going on and on. Okay, so I'll. Uh, uh let me just um okay, let me just try to uh can someone allow me to share screen because uh, i can't seem to share my screen wait a bit okay
Okay, so um, uh, let me just try to trace back where I, um, where I, I think this is good. Okay, so I was just told that uh, I got cut off before I even showed the uh, platform. So um, hold on, let me just share the right screen. Okay, so it looks like that. Why is it in past? Can I share? Okay, I'll just share the screen. Okay, uh, let me just record this once again. Okay, it's still recording. Okay, so it looks like I got cut off before I even introduced the platform. So let me just go back to the, uh, the dashboard. Okay, so we're back at the dashboard. Um, okay, so uh, I think I might have already gone through uh, these um, settings, settings, uh, withdraw funds. Uh, this is where you're going to withdraw your funds out of your profile. All right, so uh, pretty self-explanatory. So um, uh, back to yourself, of course. And um, uh, let me just, uh, I think it's, uh, I think I'm at the part where I'm going to open the platform already. So uh, uh, you see, everybody, you see these uh, red buttons right here. So actually any of the buttons that you click uh, on this, on the left-hand side will actually, okay, so uh, I think I've already introduced the platform. Let me just, um, uh, move forward a little bit, okay. Uh, I think I might have stopped somewhere in when I, I was uh, introducing the market tab. All right, so uh, I'm just getting confirmation that I am going through here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through again really quickly what is under the market tab. Um, I will be uh, showing you the trades in the next module, which will be in uh, the in the next trading training. So for today's module, actually, we'll just be um sorry i clicked on the wrong screen today's module will act uh will actually just be under topic one which is the which is the introduction to the crypto box exchange interface okay so i'm just going to be introducing the interface uh for today up until here so market um under the market all you have to do is just input your volume lot size and then input your stop loss and your take profit. Okay, so really simple. Uh, once uh, You can also change this actually, if you do not want to trade using lot sizes, you can trade using um, gold quantity or something else. Uh, you can also change this uh, in the settings. So, and then you decide whether you sell or buy. So um, since this is the market tab, once you click sell and buy, your position will immediately execute. And then it will open and appear right here at the bottom and as well as on the chart, okay? It will, uh, there will be an indicator that will come up on the chart, which will show you your entry price. Okay, so, um, and then uh, I'll just go through really quickly what is underneath that uh, position. You got your orders and your strategy, and then um, your trade history, a list of the trades that you have made within, in the past, Okay, so uh, really simple what happens in the market tab. So under the limit tab, the difference between these two is that when you are trading in the market tab, your positions are executed instantly once you click sell or buy. In the limit tab, what happens is that uh, this one, you can change this as well, lot size or um, gold quantity or something else. Uh, once you put this in, 
it asks you to input a price. So what this actually means is that you're placing either a sell limit order or a buy limit order. So these are positions that you kind of put in queue to be um, executed later on once it hits um, the price, the price that you input, all right? So, however, there is a rule in uh, doing buy limit orders or sell limit orders is that if you're placing a sell limit order, it has to be um, above the current moving price for it to be counted as a sell limit order. And it's the same for the buy. It has to be a price that's lower than the current moving price. Only then you can place a buy limit order. So once you've done that, um, this will actually appear not under your positions tab. It will appear here under your orders tab. So uh, once it appears here, there will also be an indicator on the chart as well. So um, the indicators on the chart, actually, they're really convenient because they're in the area of focus. So, um, but they will also appear here under this tab. And these are actually, uh, they're not positions yet. They're not open, open positions yet, but they are positions that are going to be executed later on once it hits the price, okay? So um, once they hit the price, it will immediately move into your position tab, okay? So, uh, and then it will change as well, the indicators here on the front. So um, yes, as I've mentioned earlier, I hope it did not cut out uh, what I said. This is actually just the simple trade panel mode. And I will only be doing walkthroughs for the simple trade panel mode because I want to prioritize the people who actually don't know how to use the trading platform yet. And uh, from what I've just um, shown you, it is a really simple uh, and might look intimidating, but once you get to know and practice, um, the flow is really just top to bottom, okay? So from top to bottom. So uh, that is actually it for today's module one and module two, which is the sign up and uh, reg uh, the registration and the registration and going through the dashboard and Today, we also finished module two, topic one, which is introduction to CryptoBox exchange interface. So in the next trading training, I will be going through the second topic, which is the action tools and the indicators. All right, so uh, I might be able to open trades and show you so that uh, the indicators will come out. And then maybe in the following, we have the third module, which is um, how to open and close positions in the market tab, and how to place buy and sell limit orders in the limit tab, okay? So these are going to be more um, execution types, all right? So uh, that's it for today, because um, uh, we are kind of pressed for time. So, um, so if anybody has any questions for me or for Alexis, I'm opening the floor right now to everybody. Uh, I think we are going to have for the last 10 or eight minutes, just uh, three questions um, based on today's meeting. Uh, so can I get the floor please, Chen? Uh, yeah, of course, hold on. All right, thank you so much. So um, just a quick, Three questions uh, just to uh, verify that you guys have understood today's uh, trading training topic, right? So I have here a screenshot oh, <laughs> of gold versus the US dollar. This is the 15 minute chart. All right, so open to everyone on the floor. Um, any three or the first three uh, can draw me support and resistance lines. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's horizontal or if it's slope. I just want to know that you guys understood. Um, and it's important. Uh, the important part is being able to identify it yourself. So if anyone would like to try. Yeah, 
Hi, Professor Bobby. Hi, how are you? How are you? Okay. Yeah, so um, you asked if I uh, wait and predict the direction of, of uh, the screenshot, right? Uh, yeah, no, I just need to the arms. Is this fine? Or if it's horizontal. Anybody would like to give their hand in identifying a support and resistance line in this 15 minute chart of gold versus the US dollar? Does it matter if it's horizontal or if it's slope? And, um, oh, someone raised their hand. Who is raising their hand? Uh, let me just, Professor Bobby Joe is raising their hand. Would you like to answer? You can unmute yourself. All right, so if there is no one so far, still the floor is open. I'm just going to slowly, very slowly start drawing support and resistance lines that I see. Oh, oh. Cool, yes, all right, amazing. So, um, perfect. So notice how Senpai drew a slope support and resistance line. And as I said, this clearly sh um, shows what I stated earlier that your sloped horizontal, uh, your slope support and resistance lines gives you angles that aren't very obvious in the market. So notice how this slope support and resistance line actually is very heavily respected by price and is going downwards. And there's no way you could have um, gotten this uh, support and resistance if you were only limited to horizontal support and resistance lines. You understand? So I hope you see for yourself, um, as shown by Senpai, how sloping support and resistance line gives you access to angles in the market that aren't obvious. So here, very easily, you could have opened a short, close it right here, or open another one all, all the way down here. But then if you had your, um, only your, your horizontal support and resistance line, there's no way you would you, you would have been able to identify this the market from such an angle. All right. Thank you so much, Senpai, for that. Anybody else? Um, I see I see horizontal support resistance lines. I see sloped ones too. If anyone would like to try drawing it in the opposite angle that Senpai drew it from. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry, Professor Bobby Joe. Um, I wasn't asking uh, for which position is best to open right now. I was just asking people who would like to identify support and resistance lines. Okay. Well, thank you for your enthusiasm, though. It's always appreciated. No one else. Okay, I'm just going to draw a horizontal one that I see over here. Oh, sorry. Okay, if we were to combine it with what Senpai drew earlier, 
uh, out here. Okay, so drew one here. Oh, okay, sorry. Where was it? Can you copy this? No, I can't copy it. All right. Anyway, so I'm not able to copy the line, so the angle might be a, di a bit different. But when you draw your sloping support and resistance lines, both lines have to respect the same angle. So the best way to do that would be um, just copy and paste in your line. Right, so that the purple lines are the lines that Senpai kind of drew earlier. And if you combine that with your horizontal um, support and resistance line, notice how, right, this place where the lines intersect, price sort of um, bounces off of it and goes up. And actually, if we were to draw another support line over here, let's see what I'm going to Okay, then you would see, right, this area, right, where price intersects at about 1734 around there, right? That's when price um, does actually a reversal, all right? So, all right, if there's no one else who would like to try, um, that is all I have for you today. I'll pass you back to Christiana to properly close this um, today's trading training. Thank you all for being here. And uh, it's already been one hour and 30 minutes. We don't want to waste any of your time. So hopefully we'll see you again next time. Christiana, could you take the floor, please? Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Alexis, for that. And um, everybody, especially uh, for your participation once again. So this is once again, another trading training. We will have the next one um, this Saturday, okay? So tomorrow is uh, the regular Zoom call that we have. And the next trading training is once again this Saturday. So um, Alexis will be doing a continuation of her module and I will also be doing um, the continuation of the uh, CryptoVox Exchange walkthrough where I will also be opening and wait hold on i don't think i can do that this saturday okay but um i will update you because um it looks i think the market might be closed on saturday so i might not be able to open or close trade so i think i might leave that module for next week uh where um the market is open so most probably the exchange uh, for the crypto box exchange i might actually just re-go through once again the first and second module um because uh like i got cut off just now so i might just repeat the whole thing again uh so but yeah uh for alexis's part uh there will be another continuation so thank you everybody for participating and for attending once again and um we will see you in the next one or tomorrow bye everybody